You're listening to the Brenna Brothers, two of us. For best results, use both ears. We're here. Another show. We, we turned on a few people, huh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, we thought dancers would be great at the top, just like any great variety show. Mm -hmm. And so. you can even suggest names for our dancer characters. Mm -hmm. We rehearsed it. Uh, what was it? We did Monday and Tuesday. We rehearsed. So yeah, we hope you and like we, it. We like to offer. You know, we like to give a lot of our self and you know occasionally we explore we go deeper and bring out whatever wants to come out hmm. and this week this week it was dancing so we hope you appreciate it uh so uh if you want to you know some let's do shameless stuff real quick because we should get right to the show because it's really fun nobody really wants to listen to us they want to hear ricky gervais and they want to hear matt vogel so uh, if you want to go to gene <laughs> You can get good stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, you want to go to GeneBreda.com, you can get good stuff. You can look at his books, get them for your children, get them for your grandchildren, a niece, a nephew. Why not? Great artwork there. Go, GeneBreda.com. Go to TheBerettaBrothers.com. If you want to learn yeah. more about our show, you can go there and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can join the mailing list and get some extra things along the way. Join the club. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we shamelessly plugged, and now let's just talk about what's coming up. Uh, our next show, who is it, yeah. Gene? On the 13th of September, we're going to have Bobby Moynihan. 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 We're going to have Bobby Moynihan. Very hey, exciting. Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Uh, so, yeah, that's coming up. So. Why waste more time? We shouldn't. Who should we bring on first? I think we should bring on Mr. Gervais. Welcome. Bravo, bravo, bravo. So good to have you. <laughs> it's amazing. Technology. Isn't it incredible? Is it crazy? Imagine a pandemic without this. <laughs> oh, really? Imagine the, the Black Death. It must have been awful. <laughs> well, if only the plague had cell phones. <laughs> thank God we're having it now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for doing this. We really, yeah. we really appreciate it. My people pleasure. Are, people are so excited. I mean, I can't even tell you how, like, you know, the the response has been. People just going nuts. They couldn't wait. You know, it's like normally you know when there's thousands of kind of you know people checking in and they want to see what now there's like hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> oh that's that's it's amazing oh it's so great it's so great um men, men, remember with that many there's a percentage of them that are serial killers <laughs> <laughs> you get that a lot <laughs> yeah yeah they sit at the back of my gigs all the right, right. right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious though what did you do to get so much attention um, yeah, what, what do you do? What is I know. That? Well, the the <laughs> the Golden Globes helps. Ah, that yeah. that 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 gets me publicity for about <laughs> three months. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I wanted to ask you because, and it has to do with that. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are very funny, right? And you are obviously very funny. But what what is it that? I mean, there's clearly people love you to death, and I my my kind of what I would throw out there is, and I'm curious what you think. Is it people, are they living kind of in a sense vicariously through your naughtiness, your brutally honest kind of perspective on things? Well, I'd like to think that they uh, appreciate all, you know, the, the hard work, the talent, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the honesty. Um, yeah. But it, it's because everyone's different. You know, I, I think it's more that if you do something that's your own thing, that's sort of yeah. o that's un uncompromised, hmm. 
there's enough people in the world. You don't, you, you need a hundredth of a percent of the population to be huge. There's seven billion people on the planet. Yeah. I think where people go wrong is they think, I want to please everyone. And they water it down and try and make it safe and anodyne. And they yeah. end up not pleasing anyone because there's a million of those people. So yeah, yeah. If, if you just go, I'm going to do something that's just slightly different and I'm just going to do it my way, mm. it'd be, it doesn't have to be radical. It, can, right. it really can just be slightly different and slightly less compromised. And well, that has a massive effect because people have, they're looking at something they haven't quite seen before. And mm. it's, it's it, honestly, it just seems like a no brainer to, to sort of do your own thing and, and don't try and please people do your own thing and you will create a niche. There will be, mm. there is enough people to go, Oh, that's, you know, when, when I first did the office, I knew that I would rather it be a million people's favorite show of the year than mm. 10 million people's 10th favorite show, because that doesn't last. It doesn't resonate. And they're right. the floating voters of art. They watch oh. 10 other shows like that. But mm. if you do something that's just particular to you and slightly different, people are drawn in. They go, I, have, that's, I haven't seen that done before or not quite like that or not in those proportions. But so what, but what is that, that thing that you, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that's unusual? I mean, are you, were, you, were you like a kid that people would go, hey, I dare you to do that? And you did it? Like, were you, were you a guy that was willing to kind of push? Um, I, I, I don't think I did that. I just think that um, I didn't really see those barriers that are put up. Like, you shouldn't make fun of the teacher or the parent or the, right. I think, well, no, you should. That's, what, that's exactly what you should do because it gets a bigger laugh. It gets a secret laugh. Yeah. You know, I like to be at the back of the class doing right. that, you know. Yeah, me um, too. So I, I always thought, I, and, and people say oh, it's, 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 you know, brave or whatever. Well, it's not brave. I'm not a brave person. Real bravery, you know, <laughs> put, me, put me in a room with a spider or, yeah, or, yeah, or, right. or you know, say you've Get got the a bat out day. of the attic. No, but um, I, was always, I was always verbally brave. I just thought, well, this is, mm. this is funny. And... I, I, again, I think that um, that's, that's why I'm, I'm so keen on free speech because that's the that's the um, you know the petri dish I yeah. think of ideas is just saying stuff that's on your mind, opinions, looking into it, looking at following the evidence. I, you know, mm. I was I, mm. I had a science background, and so there's 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 you know there's an ana analytical sort of side to comedy where. You want it to, the premise to be based on truth and you want it to be sort of a foundation. Even if it's silly or surreal, there's always got to be, there's always got to be some sort of level of truth or recognition. I, I think honesty. I think people like honesty. We like it. We laugh at kids when they say the truth, even though they shouldn't. We like it because we know yeah. they don't know it's wrong or care. We, we like old people when they just, they've got nothing to lose. We yeah. love that honesty. So back to your point, I think, yeah. And I think in like, I, I use that sort of in afterlife where the premise of it was, imagine you lost everything and you were going to kill yourself. You didn't care anymore, but someone stopped you. The dog yeah. was hungry. Then you think, okay, if I'm going to live, I was going to be dead now. So everything's a bonus. And I've always got death to fall back on. So I'm not scared of anything anymore. I can mm. do anything I want. I can say what I want. Mm. And I, I think the seed of the idea um, not only came from the drama of it, the, the, you know, the investigation of grief and losing everything and what would you do, but yeah. also it was the beginning of this, this stifling uh, fear that, that people had to not say the wrong thing and be cancelled. So I mm. thought, well, what if you didn't care? What if someone said, well, you shouldn't say that? And you go, oh, I'm going to kill myself tomorrow. So what the fucking difference does it make? Yeah, so right. that was it. It was like a superpower. But it was right. all about sort of free speech. And I think... You're right. I think in that case, people live vicariously through Tony's candor because we all want to say what we want sometimes and we just can't. We, even right. though I'm going to say what I want from now on, but then you don't want to lose your job, you know, or you don't, want to get, you don't want to get beaten up. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to upset your family. So there's all these pressures 
to not act like a, a psychopath, even though it might be funny for a while. <laughs> but there are consequences to free yeah. speech, you know, and, yeah. and that's you, everyone thinks you're an arsehole if you go too far or, yeah. you know, you, you might say the wrong thing. So you're right. I think when I stand up somewhere like the Golden Globes um, uh, and people at home, they see that I'm trying to amuse them. I'm not trying to pander to the 200 people in the room. Right. I'm, I'm making it a spectator sport. Those people at yeah. home aren't winning awards. They're not millionaires, you mm -hmm. know? So I've got to tease... I've got to tease the people in the room. And let's not forget, this is not a room full of wounded soldiers. You know, no, these are the no. most privileged people <laughs> yeah. in the world winning an award on top of being paid millions <laughs> to run around, around in rubber costumes, right? Well, so, yeah, you know, yeah. No, yeah. I was just going to say, you know what I think, too, that people enjoy too watching at home in that situation is that you're amusing yourself in a way, too. That's, they, that's exactly they enjoy, right. They enjoy that you're you're taking the piss out of them yeah. and you're enjoying it more than <laughs> probably the people at home. They're like, that's always, that's right? always what I've tried to do. I've always tried to have fun all my life from an early age. I didn't care whether I was the one making the joke or laughing at someone else's joke. I just wanted to be <laughs> surrounded by funny people. Yeah. And uh, I think it's all about enjoying yourself. Cause I think if you're enjoying yourself, you can't fail. People, people might not like the joke, but so what? You've laughed. You've yeah, won. Yeah. They, yeah. People can't go, I don't find it funny, and nor do you. I go, yeah, yeah I do. I'm, I'm winning. <laughs> I find it funny. I've, Take that I'm laughter happy. back. <laughs> Take that laughter back. <laughs> yeah. I'm having a good time. People can't did, argue with that. They can like it or not like it, but they can't deny share, me a good time. Yeah. Did you share, um, I know when Billy and I were growing up, two big influences for us, which had a definite healthy amount of irreverence were the Beatles and Python. And I took uh, a big cue from both of those groups. Well, I was too young for both of those things really, but I had older brothers and sisters. So I think I was appreciating them and laughing at them earlier than I should. Do you uh -huh. know I what I mean? I, I don't think I Jean. really appreciated Monty right. Python and the Beatles at 10 years old, but, mm. I could see my older brothers and sisters. So I sort of got into them that way. Um, yeah. Like with P Python, I liked, I liked the ministry of silly walks. I oh, probably right, didn't right. get the satire, you know, right. um, uh, but, uh, and the Beatles, <laughs> they were on the radio and they were pop songs. And I liked, I liked, you know, um, so, and in a weird way, I don't think either of those were influences. I think your influences of course they were. You, you yeah. can't deny right. that they were around. Um, but then you find your own thing. And uh, I think a bigger influence than uh, Monty Python was Faulty Towers. Oh, That's right. when I first thought, this is, this is a, an amazing craft. The mm. performance, the writing. And that was a big influence um, to me in, in the, sense, the business model. To, to put all your eggs in one basket. Right, right, right. Do 12 and leave it. Move mm -hmm. on to your next thing. So that was a big influence. I also think it's a very, um, an interesting character because it was, uh, Basil thought it was on the cusp of that, that blue collar, white collar world. He wasn't yeah. quite middle class enough. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But he looked down on peasants. He was, <laughs> it was a funny sort of thing. And all our sitcoms were about class. But that mm. one played with it a little bit more. That one, you know, and I was fascinated with that, you know, the end of the well, and, mid to and, late 70s. And he also is, uh, th that writing is also rooted in reality and truth. That's where it yeah. feels like it's, it, that's where it's grounded, right? Well, and, it's a and man the craziness comes be, out of that. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's not trying to be funny. He's angry. Right. He yeah. thinks he's, he, he's not happy with his lot, you know, um, yeah. uh, which, is a, which is a lovely comic character. Uh, he's... Yeah. He, he thinks he deserves better. He's, he's um, that, 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 he has that pretension and uh, he thinks he's surrounded by idiots, not seeing that yeah. he's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fun. <laughs> and that's a very good point. Someone trying to be funny like yeah. in, in real life isn't as funny as someone not trying to be funny. Someone trying to be taken seriously is always funnier. 
Someone hey, yeah. who doesn't want to be laughed at, that's always funnier. <laughs> and <laughs> that sort of taught me the, uh, the reaction as well, because early comedy, it had people being stupid, but other people not really reacting to it. Like, it was a room full of idiots. Whereas in real life, what's funny for me, like a, a tramp dropping his trousers and doing a little dance in the street, that's funny. But if I look across the road and I see a man in a suit and a bowler hat looking... You know, just proving me that's the yeah. funnier bit for me. That this right. guy's annoyed at this yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, Lauren Hardy set that out again. Mm -hmm. They both thought they would be better off without the other one. One was yeah. sort of happy and pretentious, and the other one was an idiot. But he was not the one who ended up in the duck pond. The pretentious right. one did. It, right. The people right. fell in. He was quite happy. It's yeah. the satisfied fool and the dissatisfied Socrates. And, and those are the two big staples, and you've got to choose which one you are. And yeah. uh, with Brent, it was he, he's a he's a you know a oh, satisfied yeah. fool, you know. Yeah. Whereas Andy <laughs> Millman in Extras was a dissatisfied Socrates. He knew his lot, and he didn't like it. It was annoying my, to him. My most the most hysterical moments for me with Brent is when he's being interviewed. He says something, and it's those split seconds afterwards where you see all the insecurity come in. You realize, <laughs> yeah. like, what the hell did I just say? Do they like it or do they not? You know exactly. And it's about that hit that character because it's a fake documentary. Because we know he's trying to be discovered. He's trying to get affirmation from the world. Everything's funnier. If that was just a sitcom, shot eye of God, it, it, it'd be quite funny, I guess. But mm. it would be a bit surreal. But once yeah. you know this man is trying to be famous, it all slots into place. He's trying yeah. to be loved. Yeah. And he's got that terrible love-hate relationship with fame where he keeps going back for more. He keeps, he thinks, this time I'll show the world I'm a great lyricist. This time I'll show the world <laughs> I'm funny. This time I'll show the world I'm a leader of men. And of course he gets caught out and the, the fame machine stitches him up. They yeah. put that bit in, you right, know, because... Right. That's exactly what a real documentary would do. A real documentary wouldn't go, oh, he made a bit of a fool himself. Let's, let's leave that out. They yeah. go, come on. <laughs> go <Great> on. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, well, I just spent um, <laughs> half a day watching a little clip, right, on Twitter yeah. of a man no. who's about to play guitar and falls oh, off his chair. Yes, it's yes, the, we just saw that. It's incredible. Because I can't stop watching it. it. You both, I saw it. Yeah, oh it's amazing, God. isn't it? Because oh he didn't want that to happen. Anthropologists <laughs> say that the first joke, the first bit of humour, was one caveman seeing another caveman hit his head. Because that's empathy. That caveman right. knows that other caveman didn't mean to do it. And he knows it yeah. hurts, because he's done yeah. it. And right. that is what comedy is. It's and, and, empathy. Oh it's, it's putting us in their shoes. So as soon as that man says, here's a song... <laughs> <laughs> He starts going back, he thinks, I can save this. He makes it worse. He stays still, because he doesn't want to lose his guitar, and he shouts, fucking hell! <laughs> the dog comes in first, the husky goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Then the wife comes in and she says, what have you done? Falling off your chair? Yes! Yes, I have! Take the guitar! <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, and, and that, and again, we just talked about lots oh. of the greatest comedy of all time. Forty <laughs> Towers, Monty Python, <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, but yeah. a bloke it's in the best. north of England falling off his fucking chair, <laughs> right? We've watched that ten times today. <clears throat> Did we... you see, speaking of that, have you seen <laughs> the angriest guitarist? In the uh, it's my favourite thing. I, I wasted oh. um, a, a workshopping <laughs> session for the uh, Afterlife one because some of the cast hadn't seen it. I said, well, watch this. And we watched the Angry Star. There's two as well. Yeah, But yeah. Uh, the best thing about that is, is mate who's filming it is winding him up. He goes, have another go. So that fucking guitar is making you look an idiot. Have another go. Right? Oh, you got oh. Like Again, yeah. he's not trying to be funny. He's yeah. he, he right. doesn't want to be laughed at. That's what's feet. funny. Don't right. defeat it. I, I, my time is off. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> he hits his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and in part two, in part two, doesn't he stamp on it and crush it? Smashes the guitar. It's a lovely bit of editing by his mate. He has another go, and then you just see the smashed guitar. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my yeah. God.
Hey, um, so we promised, you know, that we would uh, let some of the viewers uh, ask a question. Gene, do you have uh, one that you yeah. can from it? I do. Ready? This is from Leslie Sutcliffe, and she said, what made you decide to do a live broadcast on Twitter during lockdown, and did you ever think that it would help so many people get through lockdown as it has? Uh, and you even launched a beer that helps dogs. Amazing. Yeah. There it is. In fact, there, look, there it is. It's in America now as well. Oh, it's uh, oh, wow. it's uh, Brew Dog, and um, all the profits go to... Uh, uh, rehoming homeless dogs. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah, that came out of me talking cheers. about I was drinking it anyway. Uh, cheers. And um, they got in touch and said, thanks for the shout out. And uh, we're going to do this because uh, one of the big things actually on everything that I do is, you know, uh, uh, animal welfare. And, and uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, one of the few things that's very, very close to my heart in terms of any sort of campaigning um it's always animals um yeah. and uh well the qu quick answer is um i'd like to think that uh, uh people thought i was doing it for them and trying to <laughs> save society but i was doing it for me i thought i've got some time on my hands well why not it's what i do um yeah. lots of people were doing you know walks for charity and stuff and uh, i thought well, the, the, i've got free time i can my job is to entertain so I started doing them just popping up. And the reason I did it sort of live as opposed to sort of doing a, a podcast is because I did want to connect directly to the public. Like, yeah. um, things like this are great, but it's us talking and they're listening in. Yeah, Whereas yeah. on my thing, they send in, I'm talking to them and it's live, you know. Mm -hmm. right. So it really feels like I pop into their home for half an hour. And it's the most, it's the most relaxed and real I am, I think, because hmm. I'm not, to, I'm just, you know, just saying the first thing that comes into my head and I've got to keep talking. Yeah. So it's, it's really sort of free and honest. And um, uh, I really, it's, it's almost therapeutic just to talk for half an hour. Yeah. And I, yeah. I pretend to moan and I, have to, I go, the questions are mental. And this is a <laughs> cat and a dog. And, and yeah, uh, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I, it, it's just, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I yeah. really, I really enjoy doing it. And, uh, and more we do a more, share, I think. I, I, we do a I share got, a Q and a. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's just, it's just, it's just fun. And it's nice to connect with fans. And I appreciate fans more and more as I get mm. older, I, you know, more yeah, and more. Cause sure. I realize that it's, uh, because it's, it's what it's all about, you know, yeah, all man. the, the awards reviews, all those things. It's nothing if people, don't right. watch it and engage. That's why you get those things because people, yeah. you know, and, there's a market. Yeah. And you know, that's, you know, that's it with the Muppets. It's all about the people that are been following them for 50 years, you know, and, yeah. and love them. I mean, that's what, that's why we do it. There's no other well, I, reason. I, I don't think I, 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 I've told you this, but I, I said it in a few um, interviews that uh, the Muppets were a bit of an influence on me because that's the first time I saw the little guy being able to have a go at the big guy. So, uh, and it was John Cleese, you know, <laughs> be, be, being given a bad dressing room and being disrespected right. by these creatures who didn't care who he was. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and I love that. And I sort of did that with extras and now I do mm. it with, you know, the Golden Globes. And I love that. I love that answering back. I love the yeah. little guy. I love that, the um, popping that pomposity. I, 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 and so that, yeah. again, that was a big influence. And I also like the fact that it was a, a lovely world that they were trying their hardest and mm. they were, they're all sort of losers, but they've got each other. So they win. That's and all they losers need. are funny. There's nothing yeah. remotely amusing about a winner, nothing at right. all. So right. the struggle is the, the fun bit. And that's why we're, we're with them. And, um, and yeah. you know, the first time I got to work with one of them uh, was uh, Almo on Sesame Street, which right. was, yeah. was great. Kevin, and brilliant. again, uh, yeah, absolutely great. And the outtakes that was me just just teasing yeah. Almo because yeah, yeah. I love the fact that he's an innocent. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I did the thing I did there was Almo not knowing knowing who I was or caring, which I think right. is in, and me getting angry. I go, I am a celebrity. <laughs> Are you Brad Pitt? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not Brad Pitt, but I'm still a celebrity. And I get angry with this little fuzzy thing. <laughs> and then, of course, getting off of the, the Muppet film. Um, just a well, joy from beginning man. to end.
Yeah. What a blast. You know what? Can we just, Gene, will you just show this? So do you remember doing this? We we were, I don't even know, because we Pepe and you never had, I don't think we ever had a scene together or anything, but no. you remember we just wanted to do something silly for Twitter. Yeah. It was like when you were, yeah. you wanted to send something out. We wanted to do something about nothing. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, when it, where I'm, I'm sort of reading something, and he just comes along and goes, how are you doing? Yeah, you want to see? Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter? Twitter. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what? Right. What I like about that is. There's, uh, th there's nothing in that sketch that suggests there's anything abnormal about a right. human sitting with a king prawn. <laughs> that's, right. that's what I like. It's above yeah. it all. There's no sort of like, isn't this, isn't this wacky? Isn't this funny? Shooting a movie. No, they're just, just throw that's the, Yeah, that's Pepe, yeah. that's Ricky. There's no big deal. I love yeah. that. I love equalizing <laughs> species. I think it's really funny. Um, oh, man. And I, th I told you that um, my two favorite Muppets of all time were Robin and uh, Pepe. Um, oh, oh, I thought you were going to say Constantine, because I know you loved him. Wow, Constantine since the, since the oh, movie. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, well, right. Because oh, I, had oh, met, I didn't know Const Constantine was right. a brand new Muppet. Right, um, right, right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, th the, um, throughout the movie, Constantine oh, became my, my best friend. I'd sometimes, after the movie, I'd sometimes think, wonder what Constantine's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. Uh, that's great. I know. I used to. I know. I, I, I sometimes I. I probably didn't even look at your guys' faces. I I talk to whatever. That's typical. That's well, typical. Yeah, that's, but that's that's how it should be. You know, there's. Yeah. I, I tell this story like there there are certain actors uh, who we work with that just are in it right from the start. Their eye contact is with the Muppets. There's like been a few where they haven't like Tony Bennett was fascinated with the shapes and the colors and the design because he's, he's a you know an artist by um, he paints oh. and all that so he had a hard time connecting immediately with the characters right. he's more like oh that's beautiful you know like don't Tony let's do the scene you know yeah like, yeah uh, no I'm, I'm you, there you immediately away. were yeah, oh I'm, were. I'm I, I wish. I, I, I don't I don't see the people I see that yeah. same on Twitter when I'm talking to a cat and a dog they mm. can't annoy me because I think well there's the cat and a the dog is a picture and everything this is a dog, <laughs> this is a dog tweeting me yeah right that's right yeah, <laughs> no yeah. I uh, I love playing I think that's that's the best thing about this job that we get the chance to play I don't know when it'll stop I'm going to be being stupid when I'm 80 there's, there's no doubt yeah. about, if I live that long I'm going to be being a twat when I'm 80 yeah. years old because yeah, yeah. that's what you know. I think I think it was is it? Uh, I think it was George Bernard Shaw that said, um, "We we don't we don't stop playing because we get old. We get old because we stop playing." Yeah. And uh, oh, that's lovely. But yeah. the, again, to, to be doing it for all ages and playing with Muppets all day that is that's that's an amazing job. That's an amazing. Yeah. Some people risk their lives. Some people, like, <laughs> they're soldiers, Look nurses. what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a grown man who plays with dolls. You know well, I mean? well, there was a time when Fozzie was drowning and Billy ran into the ocean and risked his <laughs> life to save him. Yeah, well, yeah. Someone, no, someone said to me once, you love animals, like, they said, uh, if, um, if there was a neighbor drowning and a dog drowning, and you could only mm. save one of them, which one would you choose? And I said, that neighbor would better never have pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, that's the thing too, like there are so many outtakes of you just cracking up from that that movie, like yeah. just you and Constantine trying to get through scenes was Honestly, my favorite. My I, favorite. Never got, I never got bored with it. I never got bored oh, with a so frog good. that could talk Russian. <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible. Uh, and I did all the junkets with, right. and, oh, with and I hate junkets. Everyone hates junkets. Yeah, yeah. You know, go in a room for six hours a day and to hear the same questions. But as yeah. soon as I had a frog next to me, I was mm. loving it because he could insult 
the journalists. Yeah. So right. and I'm just laughing. <laughs> I'm going on. So the, so the junkets were fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, time is just like flying. Are you okay for a little bit more? Would uh, you mind going a little bit more? Like yeah, five more. Yeah. Five more. Yeah. Um, let me just do. Jean, do you want to do another question, or do you want to? Okay. This is from Scott Joy. He says, as a widower, I find afterlife moving and meaningful. What inspired you to develop the series? And do you have a sense of how many seasons of it you'll likely to create? You'll be likely to create. Well, um, uh, the influence, as I said, it was, uh, um, I suppose that council culture coming in and, and, and everyone suddenly worried about what they could say. Um, mm. Social media, like uh, if, if you were mildly left wing on Twitter, you were suddenly Trotsky. If you were if you were mildly conservative, you were suddenly Hitler. If you were a centrist, you were a coward, and they both hated you. And people <laughs> stopped saying things because they just thought, oh, for, forget it." Then it's, people were scared to give their opinion. So there was that side of it. I wanted this this almost this superhero who could say what he wanted. So that was one side of it. The drama came from you know where would he get to that that point and um the concept came first usually character comes first uh, in, in sitcom particularly with me and it's usually my character so david brent existed before the office Derek right. existed before Derek. you know and you find a place to put them yeah this the concept came first rather like a movie like the invention of lying or something and it was if you lost everything and you had nothing to lose you could say what you wanted so that was the, the idea then yeah. i had to think of what that would be what is losing everything and it was your, your soulmate, your life partner. You put everything into it. You, you didn't care about anything except this, this love of your life. And yeah. so that was where the idea came from. And, um, and more and more I explored that. And after the second series, after the first series came out, I'd never had a reaction like it. And I don't just mean the size of the reaction. I mean, the emotional response. People would come up to me on the street and write me letters. My agent got 300 letters. That never happens. No wow. one writes letters anymore. But it was wow. people telling their personal story of grief. Wow. And I realized that everyone's grieving and mm. that they hadn't seen that before. And they liked it. They liked yeah. seeing someone explore it because they were going, that was me. I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not abnormal. That was me, you know? Yeah. And that's why, that's why I didn't make him better because it would be disrespectful. You don't just mm. snap out of depression mm. or grief. Mm. So then in the second series, I made it more of a study of how does he feel? What's he doing? And I made him go through the seven stages. We hit the ground running in the first one. It was, you know, anger, denial, you know, shock. And then yeah. he was going through mm. negotiation. He was sort of saying, okay, if I'm going to stick around, how am I feeling? But how am I going to feel better? What's going to yeah. make me feel better? Um, so that was the idea. And to answer your question, I, I've pretty much decided I'm just going to do one more season, which is still more than usual. It's a, yeah, you know, right. an hour more than usual. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be like, oh, good. You know, eight hours, eight hours Great. of television <laughs> I've achieved Great. again. Great. <laughs> That's enough. Great. I think I, I, I treat my sort of things like three movies, three stages. Mm. The, the Office mm. did. Two series and a special. X was two series and a special. Derek, two series and a special. This is slightly different because I don't think a special's quite yeah, yeah. appropriate to it. Right. Because right. it's about a man's journey. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that I think that's enough. Yeah. Oh well, I can't wait. Yeah, I love it. So uh, well, so here's my here's my little part of the question. Now, I I know that you um, you have a, a, a great relationship with Christopher Guest. Yeah. And uh, and I wonder if and maybe I'm already answering my own question, but I feel like, you know, we're talking about the honesty and, and, and acting that is and comedy that's rooted in reality. Is that your kind of equal admiration for each other, do you think? Well, um, I, I'd say uh, before, uh, during and now, Chris is my biggest single influence because... Not only is um, Spinal Tap my favorite comedy film of all time, uh, but he sort of became a, a, a mentor as well. Like I would call him up when I was when I was right. starting out, and oh, I knew okay. that. And so I, uh, I remember once they wanted me to do um, uh, one of those screenings where they have like forty people from the valley 
and give you notes on your movie oh, yeah. that you've right, cut, yeah. and then you yeah. go and change it. And I remember yeah. saying, I'm not going to, I didn't do it. And I phoned up Chris, and I said, I don't want to do it. I don't. He said, well, why would you? He said, hmm. if they're helping you edit it, next time you should ask them to help you write it. And I just <laughs> thought, that's brilliant. And he told me a story um, about Rain Man, where one of the comments from the focus group was, um, I enjoyed the film, but I was a bit disappointed because I was hoping the little guy would snap out of it by the end. <laughs> so he told me that story and I thought, right, I'm not. <laughs> um, again, I like Chris because uh, he, he's a, an idiot like me. He's just <laughs> silly. You can't go out with him without him just doing something, something stupid, pretending. Like if you're waiting for him in a restaurant, He'll come yeah. into the restaurant and look around, right? And the waiters are going, <laughs> and, he, and he'll walk past you and he'll look at you and they'll go, he, like that, and I'll go, in, oh, like that. <laughs> so he can't, he has to, and then he'll laugh, right? So he's, he's, he's a child. He's a big, he's a big child. Um, yeah. And really smart, and again, really honest and really sweet. Um, there's a humanity to it. We all like, we like losers. He's the biggest mm. Laurel and Hardy fan that I know, apart mm. from me. Um, right. And it's just the sweetness. It's just the sweetness and the affection for the characters. But it's 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 we we love and hate all the same things, you know. <laughs> that 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 sweetness and honesty, and we hate pretension and and uh, arrogance and so yeah. it, all that mixed up in these lovely little flawed characters. And I and I think I've 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 um, like him. I've started going towards ensemble actors. I've used the same ones over because I know what they can do and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's been a he's been a huge influence and a friend, of course. Uh, you know. Yeah. Do you know Do you know how many people are going to watch this and write a treatment for a happy sequel to Rain Man? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it would have yeah. been good, wouldn't it? It just takes a little pill. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. just far heads with Tom Cruise. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they're both they're both in Mission Impossible 12 <laughs> yeah the, uh, have, have you ever seen um, uh, Billy Crystal's Don't Get Me Started by any chance I it don't a, think so it was a thing I think Rob Reiner directed it and it's it's about Billy Crystal uh, is, is, uh, is, is um, getting ready to do a concert and he has these guests at, at his the mansion where they're going to rehearse and Billy Crystal plays Sammy Davis Jr. He plays Buddy Young Jr. He plays all these different characters. But Christopher Guest is the choreographer. And oh, it, it, wow. it's, it's before, um, what's the character's name? Is it Sinclair. Corky? And it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, the, or it's right. like, I think, the beginnings of Corky. I, and, I want him to, when I'm with him, I'm, I want him yeah. to do, I Always must be, be like an annoying fan. <laughs> I want him to do Corky <laughs> or Nigel. And now and yeah. again, he has to slip into it. Right, just oh, saying that. I, I absolutely love it. I, lo I love great. that. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, he's, um, he's uh, I can't remember your question, but whatever it was. Oh, no, yes. no, it wasn't a question. It was just, I, I just didn't know if you'd seen the, oh, it's called Don't Get Me Started. It's oh, no, I mean, when we started on Christopher Guest. I can't remember oh. why we started You answered it. Guest. You okay, answered fine. it. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what, Gene, maybe instead of, I just noticed, instead of doing the pick thing, I think somebody called in. Do you mind take, seeing who this is? Do you see sure. it? Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. Come on in. Oh, oh you're a little too close. Man. Can, oh. can you back up, please? You're too close. Oh, my you're God. Yes. Who is oh this? Oh, my God. Barbara? Why did it say Barbara? Oh, uh, you're not. Oh, is this the right call? Oh you my might God, hear. Constantine! Oh, the <laughs> gentleman! Oh you God. are here. How are, How you, are you, baby? How are you? I'm okay. Oh my God! Where have you been? Well, I've been in this little sound booth, which is really just cardboard box that I stuff with carpeting, and <laughs> this is where I give this is where I give my acting class. Is this is where I do it. What yes, I, oh my God. I do online acting classes. You're and and Ricky, teacher. that's right. And Ricky, you were auditing the class, but I have not seen you since the first week. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still? I mean, because if you remember um, eh. in the film, 
Uh, um, I, I was Ricky Gervais, right? Mm. And I and I played. Uh, I, I was acting, and I played a guy called Dominic. Nothing like me. It was an agent. But you, uh, you're an evil Russian frog, and you just played an evil Russian yes, frog. Yes, <laughs> but I, yes, that is true. But you know, some sometimes you have to look inside your little tiny shriveled up frog heart <laughs> and think. Uh, <laughs> I got to make a change. So you decided to become an acting teacher. That's oh. right, Bill. Wow. What and uh, how's the, how's the pandemic been treating you? How, are you worried about... It, you like I say, I'm inside. I'm staying in this box. <laughs> <laughs> I, met, I met someone named... I met Barbara's house. Barbara oh, let me it? use her computer. <laughs> and so she brings me food. She puts it under. She slides it in. Oh. And so I have a couple oh of flies. God. And uh, wow. but you know what? You should sign up for my acting class. It is the Stennis Todsky method. <laughs> you all love it. Listen, why? Listen, huh? come wow. on, let's do wow. something together. Let's do mm. let's do a podcast, a frog cast, right, right a frog now. Cast. Ooh. No, no. Yeah. Frog uh, cast. Yeah. You want to do it now? Yeah. We can just take over the show from these two schmucks. How about a? <laughs> <laughs> How about a lily pad cast? A uh, lily pad cast. No, no thoughts Bill's, thoughts no. on Bill's joke? No. What is stink? It is a stink. <laughs> that, stink? that joke is a stink, Bill. <laughs> Gene. Oh, Gene. What? Gene, you are quiet. Why are you not saying anything, Gene? <laughs> Bill, let you talk. Oh. 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 All right. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara. Thank, oh, thank you for treat. Barbara. Thank what you, Barbara. No, joy. I, why, why are you calling me Barbara? Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, were you listening we, we, in? Were you listening in when I was saying you're my new favorite Muppet? Yes. Yeah, I hear I, everything. I'd never, I'd never heard of you before. He, no, that's I lo- because I, lo- I did not exist. I love Robin and Ooh, Pepe, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I met you, and yeah. then you became my favorite Muppet of all time in that's such right. a, in about three hours. Yes. Did you oh, hear you that, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> he is mine. <laughs> but hey, Constantine, oh, what? what? When someone gives you like a compliment or like that, what do you, what is that little phrase you use a lot? Uh, it's just two words. Oh yes, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you remember? It is, do it's you a way to protect to... myself. Do you remember when um, we used to gang up on Walter and I used to stick oh. my finger in his throat because yes. it made him cough? Those are some of the best days of my little frog life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, God. I still don't know what the little, little frill is around mm. your throat. I still, it is, I've never it really... is my collar. It is my collar. It's a collar, is it? Yes. You look like a Chippendale. So you wear a little collar, but nothing <laughs> nothing else. That's it. I work in the nude. Zip, zip of the collar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Well, well you, we, can't, right. we can't top that. You can't top no. an evil nah. Russian frog. No. 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 It is good oh. to see you, Ricky Dervais. Lovely to see you, Constantine. <laughs> let's let's Constantine, do this again. Thanks let's for do stopping this again by. In 10 years. Yeah. How long do frogs live? Thank you, How long do you live? I don't know. I think I'm past my time. <laughs> <laughs> you had two well, lives. Depends then. On... You were a tadpole, weren't you? you were ta- you That's right. Then I drop tail and uh, yeah. get, legs. get legs. I think right. it depends on the diagnosis of the mole. Yeah. <laughs> Is it mo- <laughs> has it changed? It's, it's, it's the same. It, it oh, is, is the it? same. Oh, yes, okay. yes, it is same. All right. All right. Thank All you, Constantine. Right. Bye, Constantine. We'll see you. Amazing. Bye. Bye. Amazing. Oh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh man. my God. Who's that, <laughs> who's that idiot on, I don't the, know. on the right? Just a fan. Just some guy that jumped into Just the shot. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's photobombing, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was an absolute treat. Oh, good. Well, thank you. It was for us. Really oh, appreciate cheers. it. That was great. All thank right. you so you, much. You take care. All right. Bye. Right. Bye. Well, that was great, right? To have him and him and Constantine reuniting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so great. Constantine is hysterical. 
He was. He was really hysterical. I haven't oh my God. heard from him since then, since Muppets Most Wanted, right? No. Well, uh, I, well, I don't Let's know. See. Maybe we could ask. It would be great if we could ask Matt. You know, maybe. What, uh, could, we, what could we do to get Matt on? Um, do that thing where you do the thing. Remember you got me to, oh, when you could you do Kirk? I forget about my, my uh, magic fingers. Yeah. How do you, can you do Let's that? See. You can't Matt. bring Matt. Push. You need to concentrate, please. Ready? Matt. Matt. Hello. <laughs> hey. You're hey guys. here. How's it going? Hey. Good. How are I was you? I felt some sort of pulling. It was a pulling sensation. It's Gene. I don't know what he does, but I'm so happy you were in front of your computer at the time. I know. I was just, yeah. who knows. And had headphones where you could have been. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's you could have been in the bathroom or something. I could have. Well, who I says know. I'm not? Well, that's true. <laughs> what are you sitting on? You don't know what I'm sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question. We were just pondering. Yeah. Have we seen Constantine since Muppets Most Wanted? Yes. There have been a couple of things with him. Little Little social pieces, usually. Yeah, social media uh, stuff, right? I, I was trying to remember a few, but not a, not a ton. There's not been right. a ton since the movie. We did a, a lot when we were promoting the movie. Yeah, but not a ton since. I pitched um, I pitched his acting classes for Muppets Now, and I I know it's on the roster. I don't know if we're going to get to do oh. it, but I think I think That'd that would fun. be great, especially like online classes. I think yeah. it'd be so much fun. You yeah, know? that would be a lot of fun. And, and have real celebrities as his students. Yeah, you know, to, I think it'd be so great. Uh, I so great. fear to think what he would, what his <laughs> true method is. Yes, Stanis Totsky, you know, the Stanis Totsky oh. method. But <laughs> I'm not sure. And <laughs> we just and we just had, and we just had Ricky, and he has these great master classes from his bathtub that he teaches. Have you seen those? <laughs> I have not. Right, I've, I've seen that he does little lives. I've seen that he's dubbed live streams. Live streams. Is that what it is on Instagram? Is he well, in it's just a different thing. A number of different. things, but he has some acting master classes, uh, which is awesome. maybe like ten seconds long, but they're, they're really hysterical. Yeah. 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 You'd love them. You got to see those. I, I will look them up. <laughs> thanks for coming and doing this with us. I really yeah, appreciate thanks it. Me. Thanks. I, I miss uh, I miss playing with you like in person. I know we've I know. had a few opportunities to do things online and stuff, but yeah, and we laugh a lot. But it's so much more. Uh, there's just something about it when you're live. That's well, in I don't, the real I don't same get to room. pinch your hiney. <laughs> I don't get to <laughs> just punch me every once in a while. Lick your lick your cheek occasionally yeah. if I can. <laughs> yeah, sniff my Another, shirt. Sniff your weird. shoulder, weird shoulder like kisses, that. Yeah, our shoulder welcome kiss. Oh, yeah. that's something people don't know. Will you tell people about how we say hello to each other? Well, the, the Dave. All, the, the group. The, yeah, the Dave the Goals. Dave. Well, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there is a video on my YouTube channel about the Goals greeting. Yes, please tell people yeah. where they can see and this is So you can go to my, you can probably look up Goals greeting on YouTube. I'm sure that's what it is there. But uh, yes. Dave Goals came up one time. Actually, I think... Truth be told, I was the one who came up to Dave and I I don't know why, but I just was coming up to him and it was it was completely innocent. But I reached across his shoulder so that my arm was across over his chest and I pat him. I was like, hey, Dave, how you doing? And he was like, what's the deal with that? <laughs> he was, and he was uh, he he thought that's the new greeting now. It's it's kind of it's it's polite because you're saying hey how are you, but it's also right. pushing somebody away because your arm is crossing <laughs> in front of them. And he just we called it the goals greeting, and now every well, time we see each other, we just kind of do the goals greeting. But there was a previous greeting. There were you not a, a part of the previous one? I, I know Shoulder what you're going to do, but I was not part of that. But I do we, know was, what that is. We go we go in and you kiss the shoulder on the shoulder because that's just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, you you each take it the right shoulder. Yeah. Hi, I'm not, how are you? I'm not sure how if we can do that nowadays. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no. Um, someday. someday. Um, let's uh, let's 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 find out a little bit about Mr. Matt Bogle, shall uh -oh. we, Gene? Do you want to, Gene? Sure, sure. Let's Where do you go start. It's I want to go way it. back. Okay. I want to go way back for a minute. All right. Okay. Oh, because because Gene and I obviously we're brothers. Yes. How many siblings do you have? Now you're telling me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gene. Sorry about How that. How many siblings have, do you have? I have one brother. He's younger than me. 
He's three huh. years younger than me. No, oh, there Fair? he is right there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's me there with the Rolf puppet looking like we've just we just woken up. And this is Christmas <laughs> morning at my grandparents' house. I remember this is a Christmas morning. And uh, there's my brother, Jason, and he's got the Kermit the Frog puppet. When we were kids, I was how, really into Muppets. How much of so, a difference again? He's three years younger. So, so we're four. We're four. So it's very similar. Yeah, pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, ex except uh, I was the one. Uh, I, well, I was the guy who would rope Jason, my brother, into doing all the puppet shows with me. So that's kind of I was the gene in of it's that scenario. <clears throat> Does he still like? Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Does he still like the arts or performing things like that? Uh, he is not in the arts, you know, mm. but he does enjoy it. He enjoys them, but he's, but that's not his, uh, it's not his thing nowadays. Okay. Right. So you were, don't ask me what he does. Cause I don't know how I, I know <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where like he said, yeah, I'm a flying a flow flu. And I'm like, Oh yeah, you're a fl flying a flu flu. I don't know what that oh. is. That's great. Oh, wow. You know, so wow. it's like a, he's a project manager. Let's just leave it at that. All right, very good. Uh, so, um, but so, were you always into uh, puppets, or were you just into acting? What, what's your first like? Do you remember the first kind of thing that inspired you to want to entertain people? Was it about puppets? Was it? Yeah, what was I think it? it? Was I think it was about puppets. You know, I was always a fan of, of Sesame Street, yeah. and then when the Muppet Show came along, because I'm a first generation Muppet Show watcher, I just it blew my mind and. Uh, the thing that blew my mind and really made me the most interested in it was that every once in a while, you could see like in the very bottom of the corner, you see somebody's head or in yeah. the sub sleeve of the puppet, you'd see like the, the, the sub sleeve, it would come quite really up into shot. And I knew something was going on below that frame yeah. and I wanted to figure out what it was. So there was that book, the of Muppets and Men book. And I oh, saw yeah. that book from the library and I just, I, I wanted to make puppets. And uh, so I had puppets like that picture that you you put up there, but also I just wanted to make, I didn't want to make them. I wanted to have the end product so I could entertain kids with them. Right. Remember that Remember that phrase below the frame, you might want to use it at some point. <laughs> well, yeah, I should, I should. Oh use yeah, it. yeah. That's but so true. Gene, Gene, do you relate to that idea that you, when you were watching Sesame Street, were you curious about how, what was going down on below or were you more about sure. how do okay. I create that visual? Because occasionally you'd see stills, you know, of them reaching up and the sets way above their heads and things. So, um, that, yeah, all that curiosity was there immediately. Yeah, and I think um, I was thinking like, well, uh, somebody's doing that, so I can do that. And I would entertain the kids in my neighborhood. My dad uh, built me a stage. Oh, for, wow. For my brother and I, whom I made a puppeteer, <laughs> made him do shows with me. And we'd do shows for like church and the PTA and literally in our yard. We we took cardboard boxes and like ladders and other things and made like a really long stage on the side of our house. And we would do, you know, pop up. And I don't remember what we did, but we would use a combination of like the Muppet puppets we had and then the puppets that I had made out of T-shirts and masking tape. So once you kind of set out to make puppets and explore what all that was, that world, did you just continue on with that? Even though you were an actor and you decided to do plays in school, I know you're, you know, that's your kind of passion as an actor yeah. as well. But did you, was that a constant, the puppets? It was until about ninth grade. And then oh. in, in ninth grade, I was in a talent show and I had my puppets and I'd, and, and we'd written a show and I, my brother had now gone off to do his own thing. And I had a couple of my friends who were in ninth grade with me. We did a talent show and we won. And I remember hearing among the applause, I remember hearing, boo, because we won. And it uh, really <laughs> affected wow, me. It really wow. hit hard. And I put wow. the puppets away. Wow, wow. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't want that. I, I didn't like that feeling. And so I put them, I put them away. And I just, <laughs> for some reason, my mom was like, well, you need to be doing something creative. So she signed me up for acting classes at this children's theater called Theater for Young America. And it's in Kansas City where I grew up. And um, and I took acting classes there and I was around all of these people that were like me. They were creative. They they were right. interested in, in creating characters like this. And they kind of became my my tribe, my people, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you, so I do was becoming an actor. Do you still think right. of that moment, that booing moment when you're like on the stage at O2 and things like that? No, I mean I'm I'm grateful for that moment just because it 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 I think it took you in a new direction too. 
It did. It took me in a, new, in a, in a very valuable direction because yeah. I really think that acting is a, is a just as essential as the manipulation part of puppetry. Yeah. And so without that moment and without that decision by my mom to say, we need to get him into these acting classes. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be. So I went to college to be an actor and that's, that's what I did. And every once in a while I would bring out some puppets that I had made and like entertain at the freshman, you know, icebreaker and, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. And did it throughout college a little bit during the summers to make money. Mm. Um, but it wasn't, it was not something that I ever was like, this is my career. Right. And I thought I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to move to New York and be an actor. Yeah. And so we did, we moved to New York to be an actor uh, both my wife, Kelly and myself. And. Oh, oh so you were, where did, when, so you guys were together before you moved to New York. You were. Yes. Yeah. We, oh, we okay. met in college. Oh, we were right. college sweethearts. Right. And then moved to New York in 1994. Uh, the end of 19. How did she feel about that going to the big city? Was oh, we were that? ready. Yeah. We were ready oh, to do were. it. Yeah. We right. met, we had, we had uh, spent about she's a year. A, she's amazing money. by the way. She, You're I, know. I just have to, I just wanted people to know you have an amazing wife. I know I, you know, yes. but I'm very, I don't very think I've ever met, I don't think I've ever met Kelly. Oh, really? Phenomenal. Yeah, Phenomenal I try to keep model. her away from you, though. Sorry. <laughs> right. No offense. But, but you're okay with her being around me, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but all those great. flowers I send just go get returned? I could take them. He gets yeah. them. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Uh, so, so right, but uh, what was it? Oh, I know I was going to ask you. So, and we we're kind of similar in this way. I think uh, people who are part of the Muppets and do what we do come from different places. Some come from design backgrounds. You started off curious about the puppets, but then went towards the acting. I started off as acting and headed into the puppets, even though at a young age, Gene influenced me mm -hmm. and got me to do things with him. If it weren't for him, I you know would have no idea probably either one, probably exploring either one. But we both agree that I think, and Frank has said this too, that you know, you need to have a strong acting base, right? That to, to support these characters. Otherwise they're just, they, they've got no meaning. They've got no yeah. soul. Yeah, right? and I think, you know, there's a little bit of, of, you can only get so far on instinct. I, I think, I mean, I think you can, maybe some people can get, get there all the way, but I do think it helps to have a background, a knowledge of, of character and creating character just as much as it helps to have, to, to be in a workshop and learn how to do proper lip sync and, and, you know, how your hand sure, needs to move. Side. All yeah. that stuff I think is really essential to build up those, uh, those skills on both sides well, of the Dave, line. Dave Goals is a phenomenon because yeah. he, he, but he's always been curious about character and people and you know what I mean? That's his curiosity, how people tick. Yeah. And that's how and he that's, gets in, I think. Yeah, that's how he finds his way in. And yeah. and he's just kind of a natural born talent where he his characters are rooted no matter what because yeah. that's just who he is, right? Yeah, I um, agree. But yeah, but but our, our, our training certainly has helped us, I think. Yeah. And I don't think uh, you you have to do it. I just think that it no. sure helps. It really helps because you're somebody else is you're seeing it like more of a the overview of it, and and you're given tools to to start to create things rather than just guessing and going. I don't know. Is this right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think one of those big tools that you and I both and I think I noticed it with you a lot is listening, and I think people don't realize how important listening is when you're acting you know it, people think it's about what they're saying and what they're doing as opposed to what i'm hearing and what i'm reacting to right it, yes it's so much about listening and then yeah. and and that influences your reaction mm -hmm. that that right. makes your reaction it, it can help uh, make your yeah see gene yeah it can help you get something in your ear it can help make your response uh valid true. more valid and mm -hmm. true yes yeah. just right. by listening yeah. Some people have, sure. have actually just said acting is listening. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, who? That directly. Who says, who says that? No, I honestly. I know. I know. You're right. Absolutely. Well, yeah. that's, that's you know, Stanislavski and then 
through and through Meisner, that's what it's all about. It's about listening uh, from moment to moment. Uh, that's what he was all about, you know. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about some of your influences, though. Gene, can we look at um, four? Number four? Uh, no, sure. sorry. Let, let's look at three. Let's look at three. Yeah, three. Okay. Three. I was going to say four. I, I was going to say three. <laughs> yeah, let's start with three. Because right. I, about... I think this man was an influence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my dad there with my kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Those beautiful kids. Yeah. That uh, was, the only uh, person missing is your beautiful wife in this shop. That's it right. Was a great shot of your dad. I wanted to. Sh I wanted to. Yeah. Thank you. Let, yeah. I love oh. that picture. That was at my dad's lake house. Mm -hmm. You know, I think 2000, 2014 probably. Yeah. Oh, and, right. and I mean, we, again, something come, our bad, our dads are gone, but um, mm -hmm. at least you got to see all of your kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And he got to spend time with all, even Flynn, who's the youngest there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and he was, he was a big supporter of mine and my brother too, with, with whatever we were interested in, you know, he grew up on a farm in northwestern Missouri, or Missouri, right. as he said, Missouri. Uh, yeah, and he's, uh, you know, his he grew up working on a farm, and then he moved down to the big city, Kansas City, and uh, started he started a business with his brother, his older brother, what kind of my business? uncle, whose name is Gene. Oh, yep. Yeah. And nice. they what kind of business? A business? So it was like a chemical business, a chemical packaging uh, business. So they would do things, anything from industrial chemicals like muratic acid they would bottle it and put it in you know for companies to uh oh, wow. fish uh like chemicals that you could clean uh fish tanks with oh wow and anything in fish between. off i think it's called fish off yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah fish away yeah, that's it that's right it sounds like something that would get rid of the fish but right but it's not that's right it right. cleans yeah. the fish tanks yeah and so <laughs> he would do anything in between there and and uh but he would build the machines so he oh, would build wow. the bottling machines what a uh, brain and he but he had no real engineering training not not wow. not really he he kind right. of learned it on his own through observation and and uh but yeah he would build he built my stage for me tw twice two stages that he built for me when i was uh a kid and oh, cool. um, he was always there I always any show that i did at theater for young america or for school or whatever he and my mom yeah. always there, huge supporters any game we had if we played soccer both my brother and i my parents were always there they were a main uh, nice was this, was this fella another big influence of yours no oh, who's that i don't know who that is no <laughs> the guy on the right i don't i'm not sure yeah that is mr jerry nelson and that is up at his place uh, on the Cape. And uh, yeah, what are you Toronto, 10 here? Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. I do look very young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't even know, you know, that's me pretending to hold a guitar like I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, Jerry was so great. He was just such a great guy. And I'm up at his house there. Kelly and I were up at his house. Uh, he had said during, we were shooting Sesame Street, and he was like, hey, this summer, do you and Kelly want to come up and we're going to, we'll do this show. Uh, I'm doing yeah. this show at this local uh, performance art center. And, and I'd love for you and Kelly to come up. We'll write the show. Uh, you can do some puppet stuff and I'll like narrate a story and then we'll play some music. And, mm -hmm. and so that's what we did. And, you know, wow. I, we stayed at Jerry's place and uh, hung out with him for a week and, and it was oh, just, cool. it was great. It was so great. Yeah. At one point, we did go to the the Hunt House. They have a, a house there as well. The Richard Hunt oh, yeah, family right. has a house there yeah. as well, and mm -hmm. so we stayed like one night there, and and uh, it was just it was amazing. He's awesome. he uh, man, a phenomenal man, crazy cool cat. Yeah, man. yeah he was, it's and amazing. you know, I, I did a lot of right handing for him with the Count over the years, a lot or whatever character he was playing, but usually it was the Count. And then after a while, when he got a little ill he wasn't as able to lift his arm above his head and the breathing he, and right the breathing, the breathing yeah. and be able you know, to that, that was all eyes. all part of it yeah and he was on yeah. oxygen yeah. and i think it was i think it was jerry or kevin i'm not sure who but it was like uh so jerry why don't you sit off to the side over there and we'll put some headphones on matt and matt will put the puppet on and you just do the lines live which yeah. was amazing wow it was so great I don't know how you and, did that 
Yeah. We were so, I don't know, we, we more than any other performer that I've done that with live, because I've done it with Carol too. I did it with Carol for a while and it just, it wasn't quite as uh, smooth. It just didn't work as well uh, all right. the time. But, your rhythms but, were more similar to Jerry. Your rhythms, your, just your, your timing and your sense yeah. of, yeah. I, I, I know that I had that feeling with, it's interesting. I don't mean to cut your story off and make no. it about me, but just real quick. When we did Dinosaurs, Dave Goals and I started off doing Earl. And we were in sync, right? And we had the same kind of sense of humor and we, we mm -hmm. agreed on the character. But when Mac Wilson came on, the, like it was just, I know that feeling what you're talking about, it, you're, it's kind of seamless. It's, it's nanoseconds of, you know what they're gonna say, even how they're gonna react in the moment without planning it. It's right. Isn't that the feeling you're talking it about? It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And it, it just depends on who the performer is. And we don't generally do that kind of live throwing of mm -hmm. a voice and, and catching it like that. Right. Um, it's uh, We obviously prefer to be in the character so we can make it move how we want it to move and sound how we want yeah. it to sound. And, yeah. But uh, it was just, I just felt so connected to him and I could hear him breathe in my ears. You know, I could hear him. And I, I just right. knew like it was time to go. And I, and, and it just felt, you know, like riding a very comfortable bike. Well, know, let's talk about the characters that you do with, cause and vocally, you know, it's amazing. So you're working that close with him and yeah. that you are in the vocal range with him and others too. It's not like he's the only one, but with Jerry, right? It's Floyd. Yep. Uncle Deadly, which you've really turned into your own guy. Yep. He was too, not, right? he was never developed that much, you know, in the, back in the Muppet Show days. He was, he was he, just kind of a, a, a phantom of the theater. And then he was yeah. a, in a couple of vaudeville sketches, but he was always the bad guy. <laughs> right. And Jerry did kind of his John Carradine voice, which was that kind of <laughs> big, rich voice. And so that's kind of what I took from that. And created this amazing uh, personality. He has yeah. grown so much. He's so amazing. But who else with Jerry? The Count, Floyd, yep. Deadly. Uh, on Anybody Sesame else? Street, Mr. Johnson, who's Fat Blue. Mr. Johnson. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were doing him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've done Sherlock Hemlock on Sesame Street for, for oh. something, which is the other one. And then uh, Lou Zealand, Rob Crazy Harry. Oh, Lou. Kabir. Oh, my God. That's right. Uh, 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 who? There's somebody else. Just about uh, Dr. Every Dr. Jerry. Strange Pork. Strange Pork. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm Robin for a while. You did Robin. Robin. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the thing that is, I don't think that I'm a vocal match for Jer for any of the characters that I play. I'm definitely not a vocal match. I think I'm, I think I'm a performance match or, or 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 i think it's the character i think it's something about the character and i think i'm close with some of them you know the closer that it gets to the actual person's real speaking voice the yep. the farther that distance is you know in, in making mm. it sound like but i feel like i've got the characters like i know the characters and what they how they well, work well let's talk I, i'd love to just talk about sorry gene I'm, i don't mean to dominate i'm just i just want to ask him something here but yeah, i'm gonna go over here <laughs> oh yeah, all right. Take care. That's probably good. Let me know uh, when you want to come back. Uh, <laughs> I'll listen for a while. Okay. All right. So about vocal matches. So I don't think yeah. I'm necessarily a vocal match guy either. I think I come close, and then I'm trying to find the energy and the attitude and the essence or the inner soul of that character. Yeah. And I think, and I, I'm gonna here it comes. People have been messing with you about Kermit. Yeah. And I hear things and I read things. I try and, not to. Well, but, but you know, they're, they're bringing up something that is interesting because there's a whole generation that became used to Steve, right? Yep. And, and I'm probably, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here, but I'm just saying it really more for people to, to hear it, which is that when Steve first started doing Kermit, it was oh, the yeah. same thing. Right. So people yeah. have certain expectations and needs for the vocal aspect of it. They need yeah. to whatever they've been used to audio wise is very important to them. And the fact that you have gone back to the gym for me, what sounds more like Jim's Kermit, it's it's thrown people and they're going, wait yeah. a minute, wait, what? What? I don't you know, it's not. And I think in all fairness, you are embody the essence of the character, just like Steve did. But vocally, it's a little different, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, and that was all part of the directive. You know, we mm -hmm. had, there was a, after Steve and, and uh, Disney parted ways, right. there was an audition process. And that audition process 
was whittled down to yep. four people and those four people there he is right there and those four yeah. people were in workshops with brian henson you yeah. know and and uh and he told us he he would give us he was not he would not uh mess around he would when we were got up and do things he would then say you know make it sound a little bit more one of the words he phrases he uses was ooey gooey right. so my dad my dad he my dad always sounded more ooey gooey kind of yeah. make it chew the words a little more and make yeah. it feel a little more really playful a little more. yeah and yeah. so that was kind of the the, the directive uh, that we mm -hmm. that we were told to go in well i and think you're doing phenomenal i think he's amazing and i think the more you do it the more amazing he's going to be and because he's great now but i think you're going to get more comfortable and then just like we do with our characters that we've been doing now for a period of time a part of you then becomes yep. a part of them, but you're staying true and you're staying honest to who the character is and the integrity of that character, right? Yeah, that's I think that's important. And you know, I've got, I've got, I've got people around me that worked with Jim. Uh, right. I mean, all of us worked with Steve, and I've got uh, Dave worked with Jim, and he's he's you know told me things and kind of given me. That's little, where I got my stuff too. Yeah. Right. You know, it's he and he's he Frank, kind of Dave. just gives it to you. It's so good to have somebody that's still connected. Yeah. to the to the original original group that's like they us. would tell me dr teeth when jim would do dr teeth he was he would literally do this <laughs> yeah oh that's yeah. great yeah when well, you do, do do that you totally I, do that with your face i do i that's what i because because if i don't do this then it just sounds like rough but when i go oh, here yeah. cool. and then it becomes a little more southern that's you know what dave taught me was to do the, yeah. the grin that's so know? great you know he also said for me for floyd he said uh you gotta you just gotta be louder just be louder. He's like, if you if you're not loud, he's like, everybody, those guys were so loud. Jerry, the Richard, and they were all so loud all the time. <laughs> Floyd is so loud. Zoot, not loud. But you know, yeah. so that's what so he was trying to differentiate from between he, me and he and he. Uh, and yeah. uh, so yeah. Uh, hey fellas, what do you say we play a game of pick a number? Hey Matt, do you know what pick a number is? I do not. I'm gonna get well. I'm gonna guess that I pick a number, but I don't know what happens when I do. <laughs> That's it. You're at great head start. Yeah. So all you gotta know what you pick a number, and we're gonna show you an image. And okay. if you want to comment, feel free to comment. Six hundred thirty-two. Oh, no. Okay. No. You don't get the game at all. It's between <laughs> one. It's between one and sixteen today. One and sixteen. Okay. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with seven. <gasps> oh. Seven people no, in my no. family. How about this one? Uh, seven people seven. in your family. Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's Chris Cooper and uh, Uncle Deadly and Bobo. I had such a great time doing Bo the Uncle Deadly Bobo stuff. Man, I wish we've talked about this was, before, Bill, but we had so much. <laughs> we were just fun. I think feel like we were talking during the scene or just making little comments <laughs> right? that were definitely not helpful to the drive of the scene, but they sure were fun. And or Chris, I remember Chris like would look over like they're what are they doing? They're yeah. just having these little things. You know what on. I just remembered about this is that uh, when we were shooting this movie, Chris Cooper said, I, "I got word, Chris wants you in his trailer." I was like, "Oh, oh, okay, all right." <laughs> so I went over and he was, and we just talked. He's like, "I just want to go through the scene with you and just kind of look, you know, talk this through." And we talked it through and. He was so sweet and and kind and very generous and you know, but wow. to, to be called the Chris Cooper's trailer, right. <laughs> like right. uh, what, what's he and, gonna say? And you know, he was such a sweet man too. You know, he lost his son uh, recently, oh. and so he was going through some of that. And and he had written a book about him. Oh, I really? think that had just come out. Yeah, um, he was such a nice man. He really. You uh, said that was that was happening during filming. You're saying that he just that lost movie? his son then. He, no, before the filming, but it hadn't oh. been too long because he had written a book about it. And I think the book had just come out or it was coming out. Mm. Um, but yeah, he was, gr you know, grieving at that time. But man, what a great actor. He, he was, was great. So he, cool. had, he had so much fun. Mm -hmm. He really did enjoy. I think he enjoyed being there and being around a, a bunch of us knuckleheads. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Fun. Pick a All number. Right. Pick a number. I'm going to pick 14 because that's 14. twice seven. Number 14. Okay. Oh, hmm. Here we Interesting. Go. Here we go. Oh, okay. This is from the ABC <laughs> Muppets show. And this is back behind the band shell where the Electric Mayhem played. And we, 
I had this thing, like, and it says right there, it reminded me, I couldn't remember the name of it. It's called the Pit Club. And you came so, up with this, didn't you? Didn't I, this think we, uh, yeah, I think a little bit. I think, you know, we all were down there and, oh, we did. Yeah, we had, like, Dave was the president of the Pit Club. Uh, <laughs> I think I was the secretary. Uh, Steve may have been the treasurer. Uh, right. And so what would happen David. is whenever we had, David was, oh yeah, David was right next to me. I was like, oh, wait, where was David? Yeah, he was right next yeah. to me. He was good as yeah. well. Uh, but I think he may have, uh, he may be, maybe he was, maybe he was the treasurer. He was the treasurer. I, I must make, made a mistake. He's, he was the treasurer. Oh, right. Steve was the vice president. I'm sure that's oh, what it was. Right. Probably. And yeah. what would happen is that anytime we would have, and Gene, can you go back to that picture there? Yeah, quick? Go, sure. leave it up for a minute? Anytime. Yeah a guest would come on or visit because it wasn't just people that were on the show. We had yeah. this piece of uh, kind of card there, that kind of a card, uh, card stock. And we would ask them to sign our pit club uh, sign. So we'd always look up so I can see on there, Kristen Chenoweth and yeah. um, Joseph uh, Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. And, and Jack White, Jack White, Jack McBrayer is there. And, uh, Tippy Hedren is there. Joan Jett. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Joan Jett? I was looking for her. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Yeah. Up top. Yeah, and it was just so cool. Everybody was really uh, anybody that came remember, on that show was awesome. And actually, actually, if it was if it was a guest that was performing out there on the on the Miss Piggy show stage, you guys would go here. Give them the card. I because I was <laughs> you were the guy. I, well, I, I was the guy, but I was able to get in and out easier because yeah. I was at the back. You of were the behind. Show and us. You guys were. Yeah, you guys were locked in there in a sense. So you were like, here, give him the card. So that I had to go to the card. Then you were also puppet, ca puppet captain duty. You were outside. You were kind of making right. sure whatever was going on in there. And then, But you did have the better access to the guest. And we just like a lot easier. with a little Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, had, I, wish I, I was able to... Wish, I wish I was able to record it, but one day, one night, I got a FaceTime call from Billy out of the blue, and he was FaceTiming me from the pit, and you guys were all just piled oh, on top of each other. It was the coolest It thing. was very, very crowded down there. Yeah. There's another well, great I, picture I, of us, like, looking down, and somebody took it from above, and we're just like, it's just a sea of heads, and we're all just like, it's so yeah. fun. Because people don't realize, too, it's not just you, Rudman, Dave, Steve, in that front row. It's you with uh, you and David both having people assisting. So it's yeah. literally six people just in that front pit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 That's true. Okay. Let's do one more. How about that? Let's do one more. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do, let's do 11. Oh, 11. I have no reason. Just wonderful just, choice. Just do 11. This is from uh, Muppets as well, the series. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So that so, is uh, Camilla, I believe. Yes, uh, I think that's Camilla. Definitely this Camilla. Was in, uh, this was in uh, in Gonzo and Pepe's house, was it not this? Yeah, Gonzo, and Rizzo, and Pepe lived Gonzo, together. Gonzo, yes. Rizzo, Pepe. They lived together, and there was there were two models. Yeah. So yeah. this is the result of a pillow fight, I believe, that the models were having. I think. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly. All I know is yeah, yeah. I'm covered in feathers because of a pillow fight, I believe, that the that the how often were how often would you ingest a feather while doing your lines and things like no, that? It, it, not too often, but it did happen. For absolutely. It has <laughs> yeah. happened. It's happened it happened here. It's happened inside Big Bird where just like the tiniest little sliver of feather I'll breathe in. <sighs> And it just goes into my, it happened, we were doing a show at the, uh, at the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. We were doing that big Christmas show for Sesame Street and I, and yeah. live in front of 20,000 people. And I came out and I went, oh, and I, and I, I was trying oh my not God. to, like, were, lines were coming up and it was getting ready to be mine. And I was trying not to, like, just like, <coughs> you know, because I had oh some God. little sliver of feather in there. But that was a, an odd and weird fun yeah, day I too. think, you know, I was just trying to remember. I, that was like Gonzo and Pepe or Pepe and Rizzo were trying to get Gonzo to go out and have fun or something. And Camilla stayed home with her girlfriends and then yeah. the girls had a pillow fight and Camilla got caught in the middle. She's just there. Like that. Yeah. But, but it was just, fun. just before you go, um, can we just, just real quick before Matt has to go, let's do number six. Matt, I appreciate you staying. This has yeah. been awesome. I wish I could <laughs> stay longer. <laughs> okay. Yes. I love there this. is one of my friends and mentors, Carol Spinney, sitting yeah. and reading a newspaper in his bird uh, legs. And there is me uh, in my bird legs 
<laughs> that's at an Apple TV event. That's what that is. That's out. Oh, right. Where that was. But yeah, so, you know, when we're I not playing Big Bird, we're sometimes we're stuck in the pants when we're not on, on <laughs> set. <laughs> that's two. I love the difference right of the medias that you're using. Oh, that's One's true. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carol's reading the paper and I'm, you know, look scrolling through Twitter probably. Mm. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, let's let's finish with this one because I'm sure you'll want to just make a quick comment. We have to, yes. Let's talk about below the frame. Oh, okay. Let's just tell people so they know what's going on and how yeah. it's uh, really yeah. good. It's been oh, drawing by by the great Dave Holtine who made yes. the drawing for you, right? Yes, yeah. He, we collaborated on that design there, and he's just so great to work with, and it was a fun time, and I love this design. Yeah. And uh, so the podcast though is a is just me sitting down and talking with a Muppet performer or somebody in the Muppet universe from Sesame Street or the Muppets in some way, it could be workshop. Wranglers, it could be, yeah. yeah, the workshop, it could be a director, you know, and, and I kind of just walk them through from their, from their infancy into, into wherever, you know, whatever they are doing now. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end, I ask them some quick questions, including a question from Jerry Nelson that he once asked me, which was basically, you know, uh, Sesame Street's great, but you always have to have something that you do that is for you, that you create. And what is that thing? You know, mm. you guys are doing this thing right here. Go back to school to get your law degree in other words. <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know, gets you going. You know, some people have said, well, I make jewelry, you know, something. What could I say? Do you remember? You don't remember what I said, do you? you? Well, I kind of threw a couple things at you. I was like, well, you do your, uh, you know, your show with your brother. That's something that's good. Right. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I said, uh, and, and, and jewels, you've got the jewels thing. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh. I got that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you're always creating something on, in uh, one way or, or another. You really are. Uh, well, yeah. I loved it. You're a great interviewer. It was fun to do. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you're coming up. I think people, people are really liking it. I think people are really enjoying them. I think so. You know, it's something it's, you're kind of a fly on the wall in, in the room with us. And I, I think that's, it's really fun. It's, and then to me, yeah. Kelly was saying that she's like, it's like a, it's like um, an oral history. It's like a, it's something that you'll always have. It's this piece of archival history that, you know, you, you probably haven't had up to this point, which is true. Right. Right. And Jack, your son is hysterical. <laughs> yeah. He he comes I'm sorry, on. Sorry, but gives it's my favorite. Time. It's my favorite part. I'm sorry, I, I love know. you, but I know. <laughs> no, that. he's hilarious. He comes on, and and yeah. the great thing about it is that off off mic, I'm like Jack. I've got this thing for you. Do you mind coming to do it? And he's like, oh yeah, sure, fine, that's fine. He comes in, and then he's like, hey dad, you know, he's just like gets into that really dry, <laughs> so over good. it, teenage so mode, and uh, yeah. he's he's fantastic. He's a great sport. I'm glad I have him in it. Mm. Thank you well, so thanks much. for doing this. My uh, pleasure, guys. All the best. All my love to the family and the boy that I love. Please come. <laughs> I will tell I him. Love. I will I tell Fanny. Gene, Gene, real quick. Number five. Uh, just number as five. we go out. Number five as we go out. Number five. Uh, oh, we got you. Number five. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that uh, we've got this great group. Ah. We've, got, we've been able to play together. Yeah. And, uh, and that's it. I love you. I'll see I love you, you too, buddy. Soon. All right, man. I, can, I love you a little bit too. All right. I feel strongly about you, but I don't want to say which way yet. <laughs> Let's, just hand, Let's just give a handshake. All right. There we go. There you go. All right. All right. All right, All right man. Uh, thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Matt. Bye. There he goes. How cool. What a cool show we've had today. What a team. They're a great pair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they were great on screen and great off screen. It was really great. I love this. Mm -hmm. I love this show. Hey, this is a good show. I like this we show. We should do more. Huh. All right. <laughs>